Good afternoon and happy St. Patrick's Day. This is your March 17th edition of Newsline. I'm Mike Picklick. Today we have the latest on the outdoor patio season, the reopening of the Shamrock Drive-In, and an update on the Wheat Kings. But first, James, what can you tell us about weather? Today we're seeing a sunny sky across the province. Currently in Brandon, it is plus one, and we have 20 kilometer winds coming from the northwest. I'll have more details for you later in the show. Back to you, Mike. The weather is looking beautiful for you to go out with friends and family and maybe even enjoy a patio. Tanner Milliken has more on that. Tanner? Thanks, Mike. I'm out here at the dock on this beautiful Wednesday morning. It's so sunny out, I just can't stop squinting. Public health has come out with loosened restrictions where patios can open, and not only that, you can enjoy it with your friends and family as you don't have to be from the same household. So grab five other buddies as you can have up to six people and enjoy some of the patios here in Brandon, some of them even heated for when it gets a little bit chillier at night. And James hopefully will tell us later on that you'll have nothing but warmer weather as spring's on its way. Back to you. Thanks, Tanner. Killarney, Manitoba has a long history of celebrating St. Patrick's Day, but this year it won't be quite the same. For decades, Killarney residents all went out for St. Patrick's Day, but with the pandemic, they had to scale it down. They said there will still be some outdoor activities available like ice skating. Though the community celebration isn't as major as it usually is, Killarney residents say they're happy to at least have some fun. Still in Killarney, the Shamrock Drive-In will be reopening its gates this summer. The Shamrock hasn't shown a movie since fall of 2015 after a severe storm damaged the screen. The new owners purchased the drive-in in 2011. They hope to get up and going by July and ensure customers that they are following all COVID-19 guidelines. The COVID fines keep piling up. From March 8th to 14th, a total of 44 warnings and 22 tickets were issued adding up to over $32,000. There were 16 tickets of $1,296. Each were handed out to individuals for gatherings in private residence and outdoors. Four tickets of $298 each were given out for failure to wear a mask in an in indoor public place. And two tickets of $5,150 each were given for ignoring the Federal Quarantine Act. Meanwhile, the number of COVID-19 cases is rising. Manitoba yesterday recorded 111 new cases. Three are in the Prairie Mountain Health region. The Brandon Police Service are dealing with numerous incidents of thefts under $5,000. On March 18th, around 2 o'clock p.m., Brandon Police responded to a theft of a stolen tablet and printer from a vehicle in the 300 block of 18th Street North. Around 5.30 p.m., nearby security cameras helped police find and charge a 47-year-old male with theft under $5,000. The stolen property was returned to the owner. Police are investigating all the incidents. For anyone with information, contact Brandon Police Services. An update now to a story we told you about yesterday. The search for a missing Saskatchewan teen is over. Tuesday morning, CAMSAC RCMP said the body of Jackson McDonald was found shortly before noon. They discovered him on an island on Mage Lake near the Saskatchewan and Manitoba border. McDonald was last seen leaving a home on foot around 12.30 a.m. Sunday. The investigation is still ongoing. A little bit of excitement brought out Brandon police to the downtown this morning. Five cars showed up at around 10.30 a.m. outside the CIBC on Rosser. A nearby armored car led some bystanders to fear a major crime had occurred. In fact, officers say they were responding to a simple disturbance call. As one officer told the reporter, just another Wednesday in the city. Just these two guys got up over there and started scrapping. And then the town called the cops and they arrested that guy and then they let him go again. Other guy went down, other guy walked walk away and went down here. So. We'll have more news after the break. First, let's see how the markets are doing.
The City of Brandon Parks and Recreation Services is ready to open the pickleball and tennis courts for the season. Crews are installing the nets for the pickleball at Stanley Park and for tennis at Queen Elizabeth Park. Both courts will be available for residents to start using this Friday. People using these spaces must follow the provincial health orders. Masks are not required when using these outdoor spaces, but maintaining a safe distance is advised. More information can be found on their website at the province of Manitoba slash pandemic response system. The Manitoba government is investing $8 million for the creation of a new hospitality relief program. This is to provide financial relief to Manitoba's accommodation and tourism sector. Manitoba's tourism sector is a key contributor to the province's economy. The new program will provide funding to hotels and full-time licensed tourism operators. The grants will be provided as a re reimbursement for certain expenses. More information will be available soon. That's it for news. James Didick is up next with your Newsline Weather. Your Alternative Ed, CJ 106. Good afternoon, I'm James Didick and this is your Newsline Weather. Right now the clouds cleared up and we can see one sunny sky across Westman. Currently in Brandon, it's plus one. Winds are coming from the northwest with speeds up to 20 kilometers. This evening will warm up to 5 degrees and winds will shift, coming from the northeast and dying to 10 kilometer speeds. Overnight, the sky will, will, will remain clear, temperatures dropping to minus 5, a slight wind chill making that feel like minus 7. Our currents again are plus one with northwest winds at 20 kilometers. Now taking a look at the rest of the week, we will have a couple of nice days which may be perfect for trying out some pickleball or tennis now that the city courts will reopen this Friday. Thursday will have a high of 12, low of minus 4. Sunshine will continue to light our way all through Friday, which will have a high of plus 13 and low of plus 2. Clouds will start to return Saturday, but temperatures will remain nice and mild. That will continue into the weekend, Saturday's high being plus 14 and a low of plus 1. Sunday's high plus 8, low minus 6. Our Monday looks like it will have cloudy periods and a 60% chance of rain or snow. High plus 7, low minus 2. Now looking at our regional currents, it is sunny across the province and currently a little on the cooler side. Winnipeg seeing 3 degrees, Portage and Dauphin has plus 1, Nipo and Killarney at 2 degrees. Carberry and Verdon both at plus 1 as well, and finally Minnedosa at minus 3. Taking a look at our seasonal, seasonal temperatures, our normal high for today is minus 1. Our normal low is around minus 12. Our record high for today is 17.5 degrees, which was set in 2012. And 2012 is actually adding up to be a hot year, as it holds the record high temperatures for five out of the last six days. Our record low was set in 1967, reaching down to minus 30.6 30 degrees. Our currents again, plus 1, with 20 kilometer winds from the northwest. That's it for your Newsline weather. After the break, Juliana will have your sports. Sports. The Brandon Wheat Kings were in action in the WHL bubble in Regina yesterday. I understand that it didn't really go the Wheaties way. That's right, Mike. Brandon was coming off an overtime loss and a win on the weekend and were looking to build on that record, but penalties were a problem for the Wheaties. It was the third game of the shortened season for Brandon as they squared off against Prince Albert Raiders at the Brand Center in Regina. 
Brennan gets out to an early lead as Ben McCartney feeds Vincent Iorio, who scores on the one-timer and is 1-0 to the Wheaties. Prince Albert bounces back as Ozzy Weisblatt finds Evan Herman at the front of the net. He beats Connor Ergen and it's tied at 1. Two minutes later and Michael Horn snaps a wrist shot on the low glove side of Unger to take a 2-1 lead. Late in the first, on the power play, Wheaties captain Braden Schneider passes to Ben McCurtney who rips to the one-timer past Max Paddock to tie the game at 2. On to the second frame with a score at 3-2 for the Riders, Michael Horn threads a pass to Graydon Gotas who scored on the narrow angle to make it a 4-2 game. With the score at 5-2 in the third, Brandon's Brad Highland connects with Nathan Slamy on a nifty tic-tac-toe play, but it's too little too late as Prince Albert earns the 5-3 victory. So Brandon has one win, one loss, and one OT loss so far this season. Taking a look at standings in the East Division, Moose Jaw is in first place with 6 points, Prince Albert is in second with 5 points, Saskatoon is in third with 4 points, and Brandon is sitting in fourth position with 3 points. The Wheaties' next action is this Thursday versus Swifty Current, at the, and the puck drops at 8 p.m. The ACC women's futsal team held their first scrimmage after months of not being able to practice. Newsline Mike Picklick talked with some of the players and Coach Jerry Rokan to ask what it's like to be back scrimmaging. The Assiniboia Community College women's futsal team held their first practice in months due to COVID-19 restrictions. Though they're glad to be back practicing with each other, there's almost a bittersweet feeling for those who are graduating and are getting robbed of a year of playing. For first-year player Hannah Wynn, she expressed sympathy for those who are graduating. Um, it's pretty upsetting. I know senior year for a lot of the girls, it's a special time, and them not being able to experience it is a little difficult. But For Katie Brown, this is her last year of playing, and she talked about how much the team means to her. I'm sad. They, this team is my friends and like it's really hard because this is where I socialize and have fun. So it is really hard and I will miss the team like crazy next year. So we're going to continue to do some uh, scrimmaging and we have s six more weeks of indoor soccer, which is futsal. And then the summer is going to come. So hopefully we'll have a soccer season come the fall. There's a little bit of rust out there, but as we got into the practice and played a little bit more. You can see the rust coming off, and uh, they performed just as, as good as I could expect them to be at this stage. The Toronto Raptors hope to get some reinforcements for tonight's game in Detroit against the Pistons. Five players sidelined for health and safety protocols for nearly two weeks travel to Detroit. Four could play, including, including Fred Van Vliet, who confirmed last night that he tested positive for COVID-19. The Winnipeg Jets host the Montreal Canadiens tonight for a doubleheader. The Jets played against the Canadiens Monday night in Winnipeg. Kyle Connor scored both goals for the Jets, but they ended up losing with a final score of 4-2. The Jets are in the second place of the NHL North Division. Puck drops tonight at 8 p.m. Hey Mike, I know you like to bet a little. What team would you bet on to win the Stanley Cup this year? That's a tough question, Juliana. My heart definitely says Jets, but my brain says Boston. Don't hate me too much for saying that. Traitor. Thanks, Juliana. Today, we're featuring two Westman residents that received the prestigious honor 150 awards for volunteering in their community. Keith Lonely of Carberry has volunteered with the Kinsmen since 1983 and is president. He's also a volunteer for the Carberry North Cypress Langford Fire Department and is currently the chief. Tanya Lebuick of Brandon has volunteered over the last 27 years and fundraised for organizations like the Manitoba Minister of Justice, A Place to Call Home, and the MS Society of Canada. We will feature Westman residents at the end of each show for the rest of the week. That's it for today's edition of Newsline. We'll be back tomorrow. From everyone, have a great day and thanks for watching.